Well, one of the marquee features of Lightroom Classic version 12.3 was the addition of AI-based noise reduction, which is really exciting stuff. Glad to see it. As a DxO Pure Raw user, of course, my first question was, how does it compare? So that'll be the purpose of this video. So let's take a quick look at how you process with the new Lightroom AI-based noise reduction. I won't belabor the point because I'm sure you've seen it a hundred times already. So there's a couple ways to get to it. Pick the raw file. You can right click, go to enhance, and you're going to get a menu pop up that shows the ability to denoise that top. That's the new feature. The default value is 50. It's going to generate a preview in that little window showing you what the noise reduction would look like as a quick example. You can change that slider to any value you want from 0 or 1 up to 100, but that's the default. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is, I believe it's some of the photo menu, enhance will bring up the same dialog box, or if you're in develop, and you go down to the detail panel, there's denoise. All of our manual noise reduction is still available. It's probably closed like that, so if you want to see it, open the disclosure triangle and you still have the ability to do the same noise reduction that was available prior to this newest release. Okay, let's go back to grid view and um, just want to do a, a quick review or a quick look at these images. I chose this bald eagle because I wanted to see how it compared using images with some detailed plumage. So here's our bald eagle uh, processed a little bit in raw, some exposure adjustments, but untouched in terms of noise. And if I zoom into 100% and then I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can take a look at that. It's pretty noisy, but not bad. Uh, certainly recoverable. We'll take it back to fit in the window. Here is the DxO Pure Raw. All the exposure settings synchronized. And now I'll zoom in to 100% on it. Move it over a little bit. And then I'll zoom in a little bit more so you can take a look at it. Then we'll go back to fit on the screen. And finally, here is the image run through Lightroom's noise reduction at the default value of 50. I'll zoom in a little bit on it. And then we'll zoom in a little bit more. So that's what they look like individually. So now let's just do the quick comparison. Let's grab the deep prime image. Let's grab the enhanced noise reduction DNG that came out of Lightroom. Tap C for compare. Zoom in to 100% and start to do a little bit of comparison. I can see even at 100% that the image on the left, which is the Deep Prime XD version, has more detail in the head. A little less obvious, but more detail in the wings, but harder to see just because I think the coloration. So we'll zoom in a little bit more and take a little more detailed look at it. And I think as you zoom in and, and look, there's a pretty clear difference in what you can see in terms of the details. I think the noise reduction is very similar. I think the Lightroom Enhanced Noise Reduction did a pretty good job, but unfortunately, and on this kind of an image for me, at the expense of some details. And I've tried it with several of my avian images and the results are consistent. I tend to lose more detail than I'd care to lose with the Lightroom version. So now let's go back to grid view and let's pick up a different kind of an image. So a landscape image at night. So this image was at ISO 12,800. So a pretty high ISO image. And if I zoom in up here, you can see you know, a significant amount of noise in the sky, but I needed this fast a, 
uh, an ISO, this high an ISO, to, to pull this shot off. So there we go with that. Next to it is the DxO Deep Prime XD version of the same image. If I zoom in on it, looks pretty darn clean. One of the things I get concerned about with night images is do I lose very many stars since noise reduction is, is going to do some blurring that could cause that. And this doesn't look too bad. Let me move over to this version. This is the Lightroom Classic version at 50, at the, the setting of 50 on the noise reduction. And finally, this last one is the same image with it set to 100. So I'm going to go back to grid view and let's just pick up the pure raw image and the Lightroom one at setting of 50. So we're zoomed into 100% on that so that you can look and see what's going on. And what I see is pretty darn good result from Lightroom, but when you start looking at details again, we'll zoom in a little bit more here to take a look. This rock face is a kind of an easy place to see it, and down this ridge where I've lost more detail in the Lightroom version. And in this area, if, it, if I just start looking, I've lost stars. They're just not there. They've been denoised away. So that's a little bit of a concern, but you know, it's not a bad, it's not a bad result. I'm not saying it's a bad result. I'm just saying I don't think for me, for my purposes, it's as good. And of course, you're the only one that can decide whether um, you want to go with a third party kind of a noise reduction application, whether it's DxO or Topaz or whoever you might like versus this new one, which of course, if you have a, a photographer's description to Adobe, now you own it. So that's pretty cool. So let me go compare the DxO and the Lightroom one at 100. The Lightroom one in this case is at a value of 100. And now, of course, if you look, it's, it's pretty obvious even at a value of 100. I'll zoom in a little bit more that you can see a, quite a significant loss of detail. So at least for me on this kind of an image, I would never go to 100. My experimentation so far is 100 is, is pretty aggressive. Let me just bring up these two. This is going to compare the one at 50 and the one at 100. And I know which one is which just based on the name, but I'll show you in just a second how you can see exactly what setting was used. But if you compare the face and that ridge that we've been looking at and the stars that are or are not there, you can see the one at 100 was even more aggressive at removing those details. Let's go back to grid view. I'll show you where you can see that value. So if I take this image and I just take it to develop and you look at the history, note the name, Enhanced Noise Reduction-50. The next image over, Enhanced Noise Reduction-100. So it's at least a way you, you can see what it was as an easy way to find it if you needed to or if you cared to. I just wanted to show you that because I thought it was interesting. I, I actually bumped into that somewhat accidentally. Okay, so there's a couple of different types of images. Let's compare this Star Trails image. So here is the, the, the native raw file at ISO 1600, so not quite as high ISO. Um, this was done using Live Composite on my Olympus system, which is just fantastic for Star Trails. And even at 1600 out of the camera, this is a pretty usable image. So let's see what it looks like with the DxO version. The first thing you notice, of course, is that lens correction. The algorithms in DxO, are, I think, are just fantastic for trying to straighten up uh, some of the lens corrections. Light rooms are good. Um, I think DxOs are really sort of the industry standard. This is really good. And here is the Lightroom version with a setting of 50. I didn't go to 100, just to 50. So let's compare DxO and the Lightroom side by side. 
And in this kind of an image, honestly, there's very little difference that I can discern. I mean, they both look really good. There's not nearly the, the kind of detail that we're looking at, say, in the bald eagle or that I could see in the face of the mountain for that just star points night image. But in this case, I think the Lightroom one did a really nice job. Um, I still think I could see minute differences, but you know nothing really concerning to me at all in this kind of an image. So it was kind of fun just playing with two or three different types. Hopefully that gives you a, a quick overview of what I saw with different kinds of images. Um, again, I think as photographers, it's pretty exciting that now we have this ability in Lightroom. If you already have a third-party application, do your own comparison, see what you think. There could be images where one does better than the other. So far, my results have been um, favoring my third-party application, DxO Pure Raw, but you saw samples where it varied in how much difference you could see. Okay, until next time, happy shooting and good light.